Yesterday, we were speaking about Madalila Chaitanya Charitamta, 8th chapter, Raya Ramananda Sambhad. We are discussing about this, where Mahaprabhu himself, he made some questions to Raya Ramananda. Yesterday we heard, he asked about what is the best knowledge. Radhamana said, there is no knowledge beyond Krishna Bhakti. Mahaprabhu asked, from all the knowledges, amongst all the knowledges, what is the best knowledge? Radhamana, in a very simple way, he said, there is no knowledge except for Krishna Bhakti. Except for Krishna Bhakti, there is no other knowledge. So there is material knowledge. So Jara Vida material knowledge and Para Vida transcendental knowledge. Material knowledge, knowledge of this world. All this knowledge of this world just make the jivas full of ego and arrogance, like ego. Because of the ego, the jivas, they are... They forget their own swarup. So all the material knowledge just make the jivas, uh, make them more and more under the illusion. They're thinking, oh, I'm so knowledgeable. I have all kinds of knowledge and because of this, the jivas they go, they want name, fame and reputation. Nothing else. So just like a donkey, wandering this world and working like a donkey. The donkey, he's lifting weight in his back. Carry weight on his back. Sorry. And then he doesn't get anything. That's why you're compared to donkeys. Yeah. 
but transcendental knowledge is Bhagavad Bhakti. If someone has Krishna Bhakti, this is the topmost. In this context, we were hearing this knowledge of how to please God is the best knowledge to please God what is the meaning of knowledge? Vidya. How can we uh, put our minds in God? Amongst all the Ganis, like all the Ganis, they are full of ego. Like for example, Ravana was so knowledgeable, he had so much knowledge. Ravana was not an ordinary person. In Tata Yuga, Ravan was so knowledgeable. Who was knowledgeable as like Ravan? But the name of Ravana is coming in the category of a demon. He's a demon. Why? Because he was against God. So this is true. So the more we have ego, more we are against God. Like if you think I know everything, I know so much. All the Advaita Vadis, impersonalists, they study all the Veda Purana Upanishad, but in the end, they become Brahma Vadis, they go to the impersonalism. They think they are God. In Haridwar you can go and you will see that these great Mahantas and Pandits in Haridwar, like these knowledgeable, like no, learned and scholars, they are, they all know Sanskrit so much, but they put Bindi on their forehead or like three lines. They put one circle, red circle in the foreheads. Or maybe three lines they put in their foreheads. Why do they put this? Means actually the destruction of Triputi Vinash. Do you understand? What is this? It's written in the Jaiva Dharma. Destruction of Bhakta Bhakti and Bhagwan. So this destroys sadhya, sadhan and, and sadhya. So like sadhaka, sadhan and sadhya. Why do we use three rounds kantimala? Sadhaka, the practitioner, sadhan, the practice and sadhya, the goal. But the Advaita Vadis, in monists, they destroy three of them. They think there is only true Brahma. They think I am Brahma. Brahma is Nirakarivishesh. Without form, without qualities. Prabhupada Maharaj himself he told about nine limbs of bhakti do you know this verse who has memorized this verse 
Okay, so tell me the shluk. Do you know the shluk? You should memorize the shlukas. Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaran. This describes the nine limbs of bhakti. Prada Maharaj is telling this verse. So to start bhakti, you need to surrender yourself. Pumsarpita means the conditioned souls. When you say Purush, is referring to the the jivas who are enjoying sense gratification. So we must follow Bhagavad Bhakti. So, so before practicing Bhagavad Bhakti, you must surrender to Bhagavan. Like you're hearing Harikatha, this is Bhakti. But if you haven't surrendered yourself to Bhagavan, this Shravan is actually not real Shravan. It's not coming to the category of Bhakti. Do you understand? So that's why the first step of Bhakti is to surrender yourself to Bhagavan. Of all the glories, yeah. fames, kirti. The best is Krishna Bhakti. One who is famous. World. Since time, so many people are coming and going. People, how many people? But that person, that jiva, who is coming to this world is successful, if that person, before giving up his body, this person is doing something like something important, then his life is successful. We, if we analyze in material perspective, like greatest scientists have come to this world. And we remember these people because of their contribution to this world. Why? Because before giving up this body, they have given some contribution to the people of this world. Like for example, what? They did something good, some, and that's why we still remember these people. Like we, why do we study about these idealistic people? Like so many people we study in school about them. 
they did something important to the society and to the world before they left this world. That's why we remember them until now. So let's first hear about material world. Politicians and scientists also. Um, until nowadays, we remember them. Isn't it? We study about them in school and college. Isn't it? Because they have done something before going. These great scientists and so this name, the his na their names are written in the history, isn't it? Why? Because they did important things. Like Isaac Newton, for example. He has uh, like discovered the law of gravitation. Great poets also, great writers, so many. So this is material glory, material fame. So what is the highest glory and highest fame? Is if you are a devotee of Lord. So in spiritual realm, we'll remember to those those who have given something spiritual to us like the names of our gurus for example isn't it even though they are eternal still according to the vision of the people they are inspiring us to bhagavad bhakti they are inspire us to enter Bhagavad Bhakti. They gave us all the wealth in Bhakti. That's why in the book Vilap Kusumanjali, Shila Raghunadas Goswami, he is praying to the feet of Rag Sanatana Goswami. And what is he saying? So in the book Vilap Kusumanjali, Shila Raghunadas Goswami, what did he write? I, Anabipso means, I did not want. I didn't want to enter the realm of Bhakti. I didn't want to practice Bhakti. But he forcefully made me enter Raghunuga Bhakti. Here was already translating, so I will just stop here now. Jai Sulgradev.